Welcome to the Mary Mack Show, where we will be talking about your feelings, experiences, and pain following the death of a loved one. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Wherever you find yourself in this entire world, I welcome you. How are you doing, my friend, my warrior? I certainly hope this week is better for you. I thought you'd like to know that we've added three more countries that have signed on to listen to our show. We now have audience in Japan. Botswana in Africa, and Nepal in Asia. And we're very happy that you could join us. We're now up to 54 countries. And one of the things that I'd very much like for you to do for me is to go to my website, marymac.info, and sign up to be on my mailing list. You can do that in the left-hand column. You'll see a book. Click on the book and add your name, email, and where you're from, and this way we'll always be able to stay in touch. Unfortunately, in the United States, there's a censorship that's going on here, and we never know who's next in line to lose their platform, and I don't want that to happen to us. So it would mean a lot if you'd go onto the site, marymac.info, sign up for my newsletter, and this way we'll always be in touch through email. Thank you for that. I really appreciate it. Now, another thing I'd like to share with you, if you're not aware, is recently I started an e-commerce store. It's called the Mary Mac Store, appropriately. <laughs> And I wanted you to know about an excellent gift that you may either give to yourself or to someone that you love who is grieving the death of a loved one. And it's a beautiful heart of gold mug. That's what we call it. And it has the words, I remember, underneath it. It's a beautiful mug. And if you go to the Mary Mac store, or you can just go to marymac.info and find the tab that says store at the top. It'll bring you there, and you can look under the Heart of Gold collection and find the beautiful mug. I really hope you'll take the opportunity to pick one up or to send it on to someone who would love it. Thank you. So today, I'd like to talk about disenfranchised grief. Now, if you've never heard of that before, let me explain what that is. It's grief that is not acknowledged by society. And you might say to yourself, well, what exactly is that? And what it is, is different types of grief. For instance, when you have a suicide death or maybe someone's overdosed, people make us feel less than because of the way the person died. Or they make us feel less than because we cannot attach ourselves to that particular person. So as we move forward, I'll give you all different examples of that. 
In February of 2009, I was interviewed for Oprah Magazine by a lovely reporter who wrote an article about this. And in this article, I explained exactly what disenfranchised grief was and how to help oneself when you're going through that in your life. There are times when we're mourning the death of a loved one and people in society will make us feel and we ourselves may feel guilty because we think we shouldn't be grieving for this death. Maybe it's not our place. Maybe they don't have the right label. But regardless, your grief for anyone who has died is valid. That person meant something to you. And it is appropriate to mourn them in a way that feels right to you. So let me give you an example of disenfranchised grief. Say, for instance, your ex-spouse has passed away. Maybe you were married for 25 years, but because of infidelity, your marriage died. He remarried, and that woman, maybe she was a friend of yours, maybe she was someone you absolutely knew, and you couldn't believe that he would fall right back into a marriage with someone like that. But soon after he married, he developed cancer. And now, two years later, he's passed away. So exactly, what do you do? Of course you had feelings for him. Sometimes when you love someone, most times, it doesn't go away unless you've been severely hurt. And you might even have children with that person. And they are grieving for the death of their father. But you're really not sure how you're supposed to take this. So if this has happened to you, some are congratulating you for his death because they saw all he put you through. And you did feel that to a degree, but you have children with him. How are you going to support them through the death of their father? Now, people just didn't understand why you actually were grieving. So, you lost the support system that you really could have used. Your friends couldn't see why you would even want to mourn that death, and so they pulled away from you when you needed their support. What happens if the person is engaged to you? You're not really the spouse. Or maybe you're living together. You've been long-term daters. Or you're in a deeply committed relationship. You still felt a significant loss. You felt so misunderstood, as if not having a label, an official label such as spouse, didn't give you the ability to grieve, the right to grieve, and the support wasn't there for you. You had the right to grieve their death, without a doubt, and even if others are trying to make you feel like you shouldn't, that's just nonsense. You loved them, they loved you. And whatever label you had on your relationship is irrelevant. Mourn their death. They loved you. And you miss them. Now in other situations, you cannot publicly mourn or openly acknowledge their death. As it's something where you feel extreme loss, but others simply do not support you in your grief. They minimize your pain. What if it's your ex-spouse? What if they've taken their life? They may have remarried long ago, but your children are devastated, and while everyone shows sympathy for them, but not you. After all, you haven't been together in decades. 
I'm here to tell you that all grief is valid. You have every right to mourn as your heart leads. You may not choose to go to the funeral or burial, so you don't have to deal with stares and comments, but that doesn't mean you can't go to the cemetery another day alone. Also, maybe you've been in a secret gay relationship and you can't openly grieve. You just don't feel safe, mostly because you want to save the reputation of the person who died. Perhaps he was married, with children, living another life, and to expose them after death might be cruel. There are polyamorous people who lose their partner their non-primary partner, especially when no one even knows that they had such a relationship. It may also be the loss of friends with benefits type of relationship or a casual partner. And what about a parent or another relative who is no longer an active part of your life and their death has brought significant pain because the relationship was estranged for a long period of time? And now you feel guilty or angry because you might have wanted to reconcile, but you never did. And you thought you wouldn't feel anything for them because they hurt you so badly over such a long period of time. But now you might feel regret that there isn't more time to rebuild it. Or they were involved with unsavory people, or those with criminal activity, or were not the nicest or most respectful people. You may also be grieving for a pet who has been in your life all their life since birth. They might have been 12, 13, 14 or more years and were a significant part of your family. And insensitive people think that pet loss is ridiculous. After all, you can always get another pet, so what's the big deal? Well, that animal gave you unconditional love was always there for you through your crises and pain, maybe even through the death of your spouse, parent, grandparent, child, or sibling. I have a four-part series about pet loss that I did in 2020. I think you would enjoy listening to that if you are dealing with pet loss right now. You might also have great pain from the death of a coworker or a business partner who you spent so many hours with at the office or job and you shared so many good memories with. A lot of hard work, but maybe getting the presentations ready together under severe deadlines was something of a challenge and you met it together. It might be a friend of your child. That friend slept over, joined you for birthday parties, maybe even went on vacations with your family. Here again, there is no label. I remember years ago in college, I had to ask my professor if I could take my midterm exam when I returned from a funeral. I remember rehearsing in my mind how I was going to say it. My boyfriend's sister's fiancé had had terminal cancer and died quickly. It was all a shock to us. And there was no way I wouldn't be there to support his sister. It was an unthinkable death. And when I asked, I was so nervous that the professor would be insensitive to the relationship I had with him. After all, I wasn't his relative, but I remember my professor was so kind and so compassionate as I told him the tragic story. 
I wound up taking that exam when I came back several days later. You may also be close to a mentor, teacher, or other student. A neighbor was a teammate of your son or daughter. It could have even been the parent of a teammate who you religiously sat with in the bleachers when both your children were on the basketball team. And then that parent became ill or died in a car crash. You mourn for their death, are so affected by the grief of your child's teammate who has lost a parent, and you spend time listening and comforting them as your own child. Remember that your child or teen may feel disenfranchised if they are mourning for an absentee father or mother, an older sibling who died while keeping company with the wrong crowd. They struggle with the feelings that they have, and we need to be sensitive to those. There are also certain losses that have a stigma attached to them. It might bring on embarrassment. You might feel ashamed, or sometimes you're getting the message that something is wrong with you or the person who died. These individuals may mean well, or they could be ignorant of what you're going through and don't know what to say or how to comfort you. And this would be the case when someone takes their life or in vehicular homicide, or homicide, they all carry the stigma. Sometimes your friends leave your life after a death of this manner, because they're not able to comfort you, and it gives you the impression that they are blaming the victim. The same thing can happen when someone has overdosed and has died, where your loved one may have contributed to their own death, and the stigma can be very harsh. And for women who struggle with infertility, with multiple losses, as they may not be able to carry the child or children to full term. Or even if they carry the child several months or full term, leading to miscarriage or stillbirth, the possibility of letting that mother know, or parents, that there is something wrong with them. That's why the children weren't born full term or healthy. It's just horrible. You need to know you have the right to mourn for anyone whom you loved. And most of these people do not even have the label of a family member, but you love them and they were there for you and you had wonderful experiences. There are just so many losses that we consider disenfranchised grief. We will talk more about this next week and how to best handle your emotions and pain. So now, let's get up and dance, dance, dance. And I know you think this is probably silly, but just do it for me anyway, okay? For joining me today. Remember to continue to write five things each night in your journal that you are grateful for. Visit my website at marymac.info and sign up for my email list as soon as possible so we can stay in touch 
and you'll receive my free book. Also click on the store tab to visit the Mary Mac store and share this podcast with those who would benefit from it as well. And as always, remember to be happy because you deserve to. I'll speak with you again soon.